Alex Pierre is Sean Strickland. Guys, what do you want to do here? Because there's, there's two ways to go about this. You want to do what's right. You want to be a sportsman. You want to do what's right. Okay, it's going to look something like this. Guys, Sean Strickland versus Pierre. Pierre is awesome. Wow. What speed, what power, what timing. He's the true number one contender. Turn the cameras off and go home. That's the right way to do this. But there is another side, which isn't the story of Alex Pierre. It's the story of the fight, and that's a different story. Look, there was one thing tonight that Sean Strickland had to do. Now, let me have a little bit of a come clean session for the two of you that follow us, okay? I need to show a level of honor, which is my lack of respect for a championship in the sport of kickboxing needs to change. That guy is real. Let me start with that. But the other side, and there is a but, when I'm telling you all the things that Sean can do, when I'm telling you that Sean can go with them, when I'm telling you that, that there's no level of kickboxing versus the MMA and experience level of Sean Strickland, right? I'm betting and counting on one thing. The threat of a takedown. Piera had a fight in the UFC. Who did he fight? What was that turkey's name? Was it Santos? Very good fight. Was it Santos, though? Pierre got hit a lot. Got hit a lot. We go, whoa, what's going on here? I thought this guy was the world's best kickboxer. Why is he getting hit so much? He was getting hit so much because of the threat of the takedown. Before you think you're going to correct me, go, chill. Santos never even tried to take him down. Yeah, right. But Pierre was brand new in the sport of MMA, so he's worried and has a threat of a takedown. It was a built-in mechanism. But it is what made him worry. Ray Cepho, as good of a kickboxer as you're ever going to fight, we'll talk about that. And he went over and did MMA. Tyrone Spong, as good of a kickboxer as ever been born, we'll talk about that when he went over and did MMA. It's this threat of the takedown. You must make the guy work, whether you take him down or not. That's absolute, actually number two. And I don't say that to exaggerate. Taking a guy down is actually the number two threat of the wrestler. The first is the belief that you want to go take him down. It changes everything. It will change where the hands go. It will change the speed. It will change the footwork. It will change where his mind is at. You will change a guy. We will see world champion kickboxers come over in MMA and be knocked out in the first round. We've seen it a number of times by non-strikers. But the one thing that was prevalent was the threat of the takedown. Sean didn't threaten it tonight. I don't want to be hard on Sean. I want to be the opposite, which is, hey, don't hang your head. That combo would have put down anybody. You were in a bad spot, but you didn't need to be there. And he did not come out fluent and relaxed in kickboxing at first. He came out to look around what's going on and you convinced him that he had nothing to worry about except kicks and boxing. It's wildly important that you understand that. That fight, and I actually trust that Sean was going to get around to it. It was a pretty quick fight. I don't think Sean was planning to go all night and just punch and kick and walk the guy down. I don't think. But I also don't have evidence and proof that he did, and it's very relevant. Sean's got to add that. He just does. Just does. And I'm bringing this to your attention, because there's no reason to not start right now. It started tonight. And I'm talking about Piera versus Adesanya. And when I'm talking about the threat of the takedown or the lack thereof, there will be no threat of a takedown for Piera when he takes on Adesanya. It's an interesting match. I am not the best to speak on. Now, that's going to surprise you. I know I'm all of your favorites. But I would not be the best to speak on two pure kickboxers who are rematching. For a third time, they're rematching two kickboxing matches, but they're doing an MMA. Neither one has ever gone for a takedown, ever. Neither one has ever gotten a takedown. And I should say that in reverse order. Not only has neither one gotten a take, neither one has ever looked for a takedown. So you have a fight that has no threat. And a number of people are trying to make a very big deal about the four-ounce gloves. I think those people sound like fools. But 
I need to listen, and I hope we hear from the Tyrone Spongs, the Ray Seffos, and the Henry Hoofs. I hope the Coach Rufuses, both of the boys, speak up on this. I hope Maurice Smith comes back. Guys, we've never seen this. For a kickboxer to make it to a main event is very rare. One thing we proved in 1993 is those boys don't fare near as well as the grappling arts. That's true. But not always. And now it's happened times two. This has never been done. This has never been done. My sport's seen it. The sport of wrestling. We have had two wrestling stuff and go fight for championships. Sure we have. Name a bunch of them at the top of my head. Randleman versus Couture. Coleman versus Couture. I could play this game. I'm stopping right I'm sharing with that. That's very common that we, we do very well. To get two kickboxers at the same time, the same weight class, who, by the way, made it to the absolute top. No, that hasn't happened before. It's an interesting match. And what to make of it? Well, I could break those grappling ones down for you all day long. Get a jujitsu guy versus a wrestler. You slip a judo guy in there. You do it any way you want to do it in grappling. I'll know 10 examples to give you guys. I don't have one, but you don't have one to give me either. This has not happened before. Kickboxing has not fared very well. That's true. It's not without exception. Maurice Smith showed us that. It's not without exception. But not only is it not fared very well, they're not going to fare well at the same time against each other. Remember when Machida changed karate? Remember when karate sucked and everybody found out? But, well, no, hold on. Not so fast. Turned out the guys that did it weren't the best athletes. But now we find it, it is. Imagine he made it to the finals back in his gym. Imagine he was defending that belt. But then fill in the blank against Wonder Boy. I don't think you have to correct me on the weight classes. Imagine two karate guys at the same time. The sport that had never done very well. Not only does well, it does the absolute best, and it does it on both sides of the brackets. Kickboxing is a small sport. This would be massive if we had real sports here. We brought over two soccer players. Two great soccer players are going to be in the UFC at the same time. Right? Ah, oh, come on. This is silly, and they'll be out of here, but okay, they both got signed. Some, just go. Imagine they made it to the main event for a championship against each other. Oh, by the way, imagine they had played before twice. Oh, by the way, the outcome that you think happened did not happen either time. Oh, by the way, neither one has ever lost. Do you know how massive that match would be? Now, nobody follows kickboxing. We don't have like a kickboxing community. So they're not going to come over. and We're going to get this great in uh, influx. But this is a very interesting match. And this is uncharted waters. And no matter what level of experts you want to be and you want to come out and pretend, you will be no more of an expert than what I just laid out for you right now. This has not happened before. There is no paradigm. There is no blueprint and there is no example. We need to hear from the Maurice Smiths, from the Rufus brothers, from the Henry Hoofs. We have to. The Ray Severs, the Tyron Spongs, they must tell us what to expect. And a lot is being made of the four-ounce guy. I don't think that's real. I don't. I give a goddamn in practice, and some guy, oh, God, we're going little gloves again. What's the difference? Little gloves, big gloves, what's the difference? Don't hurt the guy, get really tired, push hard, go home in five rounds. I, I never understood it. But I also don't know the difference between a ring and a cage. I don't know the difference between a big ring and a little cage. I don't know anything about this stuff. I don't know the difference between a southpaw and orthodox when it comes to fighting them. I was a southpaw. People said it was a problem. They had to bring partners in before they would fight me. They had to train with southpaw. I don't know anything about it. I fought southpaws. I couldn't tell you who they are. I don't know anything about it. And I think there's a whole world out there to know. I, I don't. Never, I don't know anything about it. What leg he leads, you think is going to change how I, I don't know anything about it. Other people have a different opinion, including Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier, we did it tonight. It's the last things that he said. He said, Pierre knocked out Adesanya twice with big gloves. Think of the confidence he's going to have with four ounce gloves. Is that true? Is that how it works? It's not a def it's not an adherent to defense. It's it's all positive. I mean, I want to hear, but we got to hear from these guys, guys. Make sure you understand one thing and one thing only as you look forward to this fight. This is uncharted water. This is two athletes from a sport that has limited success who came in at the same time in the same weight class and have cleaned out the divisions, both sides of the bracket.